The Chicago Bears have a big time breakout player. Sources are beginning to notice, and that player is Braxton Jones. Now, I agree. I'm going to share what PFF had to say in just a minute. My thought is a little different, though. I think Jones already broke out. I think he's looking to build on this and become a cornerstone of the team. I think it's already happened. And there's going to be a couple other things that I will go through. And this is Sports Talk Bears. I'm your host, Sean. We are building towards 10,000 subscribers. Join our family. We'd love to have you here. It's super positive and fun. So we look back to the draft. Many were calling for Joe Alt, right? For him to be drafted, for him to replace Jones. I get it. Alt is definitely great. He's definitely a better player, but the Bears have a fifth rounder that's just solidified his place on the line and on the O-line, and that's why GM Ryan pulls. He believes that the answer, it's already on the team, and I'm just going to let PFF speak with their evaluation here. See if you can pick out on what I disagree with in this. See if you can pick out the disagreement So P from PFF. A fifth round pick out of Southern Utah in 2022, Jones proved that in 23, his impressive rookie season, it wasn't a fluke. Although he slowed down by an injury, he had a bit of a decline from his 2022 season. He's still one of 24 offensive tackles to have earned pass blocking grades over 70 in each of the last two seasons. So by any measure, Braxton Jones has dramatically exceeded expectations in the NFL. A former fifth round draft pick, he's been a starter for the last two seasons, solid in all areas. However, he didn't improve in his second season. Players who are merely solid often quickly become seen in terms of their deficiencies rather than their strengths. Jones wasn't helped by the play of Justin Fields, even if he was occasionally bailed out on individual plays. Fields could certainly escape the occasional quick pressure, but he was also the architect of a lot of pressure and held on to the ball longer than any other player in the game, stressing the protection in front of him. So PFF concludes with, with a new quarterback behind him, Jones may look significantly better in year three, and hopefully when he's healthy again, show a true ceiling of what he can become at this level. So I just read through a bunch of that. So what's the rub? The thing that I disagree with, they said that he didn't improve. They said that he had no improvement in 2023 from 2022. And I'm going to tell you why. I mean, here's the thing with PFF. They aren't all together the end-all, be-all when it comes to player evaluations, right? They they give us a good baseline, a good measurement of a player's uh, place in the league, but all together they're not reliable. I mean, look at the Bears' secondary evaluation recently. I just did a story on it. Absolutely ridiculous. Proves that it's not a product of actually watching games. They don't fully take into account injuries, the ebb and flow. Uh, I mean – just all the things that are beyond their uh, evaluation metrics, they don't seem to take it into account. And they rank the Bears secondary 19th. Now, it's fully blind when other sources who more traditionally evaluate specific teams, myself included, most everyone has the Bears in the top five. I mean, even number one. And that's not a homer take. It's flat out a product of eyes on the player evaluation outside the numbers. And frankly, the numbers support the ranking of the Bears secondary as well. PFF just whiffed on this for some reason. So they are fallible, fallible. And this evaluation of Jones, even though it's predicting a breakout, it's not really even a great overview of his last year. I mean, P PFF saying that Jones did not improve last year in 2023 was just a continuation of his rookie season. I like fully disagree. And before I get into this further, I want to be fair. PFF does provide evaluations and baseline ratings that are very helpful. I'm going to continue to use them. But as smart evaluators, as smart fans, we're just not going to cherry pick things from one source. Um, the problem, particularly with the offensive line, I'd say, it's also very hard to find concrete metrics to evaluate a player. I mean, and even to evaluate a line. Many times in eye test, it's necessary, but there's a way that I really like that's provided by ESPN, and it just doesn't go by sack totals and penalties. And Bleacher Nation just ran a story that included these EM ESPN metrics as a better view of who Braxton Jones is as a player. And ESPN's proprietary metric, it's pass, pass block win rate. So what is it? 
It's very simple, actually. Um, ESPN Analytics, they define pass block win rate as a statistic that, and I quote, conveys the rate linemen can sustain their blocks for two and a half seconds or longer. This takes away stuff like, oh, Justin Fields held the ball too long, or the offensive scheme was bad, or wide receivers were bad. I mean, so traditional measurements and opinions, they've stated that Braxton Jones was poor protecting the pass in his rookie season. And last year, he showed some improvement regardless of the PFF article recently. And um, they, Bleacher Nation talks about this. They talk about Jones earning the fifth best pass block win rate. That's at 93% in 2023. And that's, once again, per ESPN's proprietary net metric. That marks a climb three spots up the standings after picking up the eighth best pass block win rate, 93% as well among tackles in 2022. So, and on top of that, he's also improved in run blocking. He also cracked the top 10 in offensive tackle run block win rate rankings. Say that 10 times fast. Um, offensive tackle run block win rate rankings. That's another PFF, um, excuse me, ESPN metric. Braxton 79% at that. That was number six among offensive tackles. So for what it's worth, he didn't even make the list in 2022. So that's considered a significant improvement in his run blocking. I mean, I feel this tells the story of what Jones has been for the Bears the whole time. He's been an effective blocker in the past and the run from day one and also showing an elite um, improvement in pass block win rate as referenced by that ESPN metric. And you can look at individual game performances as well. I'm going to close this story down. You guys, that's a fantastic article from Bleacher Nation. So pick that up, pick that up. Um, so individual game performances, you can even look at his game against Arizona in that game. He earned an 86.6 run blocking grade per PFF. And that was against Arizona. And that week it was fourth highest among all offensive tackles in week 16. And let's have a better overview. Like is the hesitation rank him higher? Like where's that coming from? I think maybe it's because he was drafted out of the fifth round out of Southern Utah. Hardly known, hardly discussed, but with a wide open starting spot at left tackle, he jumped right into the lineup from day one for the Bears. And then the second year, he started the year with a lot of penalty issues. Then he got hurt. He missed some time. But once he got back into the lineup, the run game it immediately started taking off again. The offense began to look much better for about the last seven games, and he was absolutely solid in the run game his rookie year. This performance in the pass blocking area, though, that made a big jump, and PFF just missed it. Tests show it, tests show it here, but, uh, I mean, here's a better metric. For one, specific standard stats. Let's go outside of these obscure rankings. Let's just look at year one, seven sacks as a rookie, 12 penalties in year two, two sacks allowed, nine penalties. So even by simple conventional stats, that's a nice improvement, right? And you can also argue those nine penalties, most of them were front loaded earlier in the season until he showed that improvement, particularly pass blocking. So, I mean, even the conventional stats show improvement. And um, PFF continues. They have another measurement of Braxton Jones that's actually good. He ranked in the top half of offensive tackles and PFF overall grade. Um, that's 68.8, 34th out of 81. I mean, uh, okay, that kind of <laughs> doesn't agree as positively as the previous metric that I, that I shared. A pass blocking grade of 70.8, that's 31 out of 81. A run, run blocking grade of 68, that's 30th out of seven, 79. But... I just think a way better measurement is the ESPN metric of pass block win rate and one run block win rate that actually shows how the player's performing outside of his environment. And also, um, the book on Braxton Jones is something that can't be learned or coached. And this might be the main reason I'm optimistic on his future. And that's the reminder that he is 92nd percentile in arm length. 
80th percentile in 10 yard split. I mean, this is stuff that you can't coach. This is stuff that you can't teach. This is just who he is as an athlete. And he got hit by the injury bug last year, but when healthy, he is a fantastic, legit starting left tackle. And I'm glad to see people nationally recognize his potential, labeling him as a breakout player, but I, I'm still arguing that he's already broken out. And even though the the um, GM, Ryan Poles, even though he is obviously high on him, he's being intelligent too. I mean, we drafted Amagaje as a foolproof just in case. I mean, although there's faith in Braxton Jones, there's also realistic management of the team and fail safes put into place. So we have someone like Amagaje who is versatile. He's also able to play guard. So he's like double insurance for both Braxton Jones and off injured Nate Davis. Just a nice job done along this line. And I just think it's so important to reference. I mean, it's great that PFF is saying that he's a breakout candidate. The numbers by the ESPN metrics, the win, the pass block win rate, the run block win rate, those are showing that he's actually already broken out. And he's just going to build on that. So, so it's kind of like just an example of not to cherry pick one source or one way of evaluating the player. We got to use our eyes. We got to use different sources. We got to use different metrics and be smart fans and smart evaluators of the players that the Bears have. So you guys, let me know what you think. Um, I wanted to get a little deep into some numbers this week. Not my usually jam. Not my usual jam, but um, you guys are so loyal watching, and I appreciate each of you. Bear down, and we'll talk soon. See ya.